the low shot is always the safest one. You of course have to think of a shape you can actually hit into the pin. All of a sudden you are super aiming to that left side. The T for an iron is just there to have a good lie. So guys, today is the day we're gonna go out on the course. And so many of you asked me if I could take you on the course and show you some trouble shots, how I do things. And today is the day. So we're here, second shot in the first hole, par five, short par five, downwind. And I just wanted to tell you what I do before I actually choose my club. And you know the video about the back box play. And I mean, first of all, you have to check your lie. And I mean, this is kind of perfect. But you know, once the ball is not sitting so good, you always have to consider it's not going to travel as far. So that's the first thing, the lie. Then you have to check the yardage. So now I just lasered it for 175 five meters um, so I already know okay 175 meters but then I have to start counting because I have to consider the wind and it's summer the ball will travel a little bit further so 175 meters wind is kind of strong today it's going to help me down wind is never helping as much as if it's in your face so I would give it about five six seven meters so we are on one six eight and then I have to look at the undulation it's a little bit uphill so it, it gives me or it takes away another five or it, it adds two more meters so we're back to 170 and then finally I have to check the pin position how much space do I have behind the flag and how much space do I have in front of the flag do I have the green um, uh, protected by bunkers so I always have to consider those things it's the lie it's the yardage it's the pin position undulation so I give it a go for 170 meters which is my five rescue so I'm just gonna take that club now but never take that club just because you think it's the right club and all of a sudden you stand over the ball and start thinking, okay? So I have 170 as the yardage and that's what I'm gonna focus on. Of course, I'm gonna take my, my little in-between goal and I do my routine. And that's as good as I can hit it. Next to the flat. So imagine you're missing the green next to the flag or in front of the flag, short, whatever, but you have a bunker in front of your face and you have the, the, um, the, the pin just tucked short onto the green. What do you do? I mean, in the first place you have to think, what is more important? Is it more important to get it close and really just to take that bunker into play in case you don't hit it really good or your first goal is to get onto the green. I normally advise to use a normal chip technique just to get over the bunker. All you need is a very high loft in your clubs and just do a normal chip movement in terms of no wrist action whatsoever just to make sure to get onto the green and probably you're gonna have an part for par birdie whatsoever score you're gonna aim for um, but you don't have to practice or you don't have to aim for a fancy dancy shot you know over some kind of tree because there is no tree there is just a bunker in ahead of you and all you have to do you have to get over the bunker so what I do I just gonna grab my I have a 58 Callaway love wedge and all I do I just open it a tiny bit I just open the club face and turn it and I grip it in an open way and all I do I just try to chip it over okay no wrist action ball, ball position is a little bit left a little bit in front of your stance weight is a little bit left as well And yes, it's maybe one and a half meters long, but I still have a putt. And there was no danger ending up in the bunker because if you just normally use your chip technique, a little bit bend to the left and just really go through the ball, you're gonna have a nice chip over the bunker and the bunker is not in play at all. 
If you find your ball on a short mown fringe, which is, you know, long way in front of the green, like here, I mean, a lot of people would take a sand wedge or a lob wedge and lob it up there. But I mean, there's nothing you have to play over, right? I mean, you can keep the ball low. Of course, you can do a chip and putt with a seven iron or a nine iron whatsoever to keep it low because the low shot is always the safest one because the technical uh, effort is not as much or as big as with a lob shot. So now I choose my rescue club. I got a three rescue here, really low loft. And all I do, I just gonna putt it up there. All I do, I just grip it a little bit shorter so I can go closer to the ball. I lean just a tiny bit to the left and all I do, I do a putting movement. I didn't consider the break, but finally it ended up pin high. And all you could, I mean, you could see all I did is just a normal putting stroke. And this is technical wise, the most easiest shot. So I got a little tricky par three here and you can see I got water along the right side. On the left side, everything is open. So it depends what kind of player and what uh, playing strength you have. I mean, to be honest, if you play a bogey here and you're fine with your handicap, there speaks is nothing against playing along the left side. And then, I mean, you approach the ball onto the green, make two pots and you have a bogey. If you're a better player and you wanna go towards the pin, you of course have to think of a shape you can actually hit into the pin. I would not really hit it straight to the pin. I would always choose a little fade, um, which is turning into the pin. So now I got 135 meters into the wind, but the wind is quite strong. So I give it at least one clap. So I chose a seven iron, what I hit 145 meters normally. And I just decided to hit it a little cut, but I want to let it start left of the water and turn it in. And this is also the reason why I tee it up more on the right side of the tee box. So the club face is pointing towards the flag. My body aiming is a little bit left. So I pushed it a tiny bit, but I hit it really, really well and it up and it ended up behind the flag, but it was cutting just a tiny bit. Just, just, just for you guys, always go away from the water. If it's in your face, just choose a, a shot and an optic what takes away the pressure, right? So go away from the water, go away to the left. And even if you're a good player and if you're, if you're shitting yourself, you know, you go hit, go to the left and hope for a chip and putt. That's the right order. So here we go again. It's pretty much the same shot as if you would go over a bunker. I mean, you have the water in front of you, but just look more to where you want to go. But this subject we're going to have later is again, if we're going to have a water hole. But now all I want to do, I want to approach the green with no effort. So I'm going to make a long chip. I really don't, got, I, I'm just gonna, not going to use my wrists. I'm just going to use my turn and I try to chip it over there. And this is it. Don't make it harder than it is. Just chip it over the water or chip it over the bunker. It will go onto the green, I promise you. So guys, I bet you have a hole on your home course where you're struggling with your tee shot. And here I'm on my home course, on, my th on the third hole. It's a long par four. And as you can see, that tee box is mown and built towards the left side. And as you can see on the left side, I have three fairway bunkers and I have bushes, I have trees, I have big trouble waiting for the ball. So if you don't pay attention and you tee up the ball in the middle of the tee box and you stand pretty much parallel to the mowing line, all of a sudden you are super, aiming to that left side. So what you have to do is you have to find the left side in this case, because you want to open up 
the right side, okay? So I teed up my ball now pretty far to the left. Of course, I'm not standing on the tee box anymore, but I don't care because I'm having a good stance here. But I wanna aim myself more towards the center of the fuego, even feeling right a little bit to the right, because I have to steer myself against that tee box. So if you watch that now, how I'm addressing the ball and how I stand, it's pretty against that mowing line. So next time you are struggling with your tee shot, take care and maybe you've never taken care of that before. Maybe you just look at the mowing line of your tee box. Maybe that's the reason. So if you find your ball in the deep shit, like here, uh, what you have to do is, I mean, first of all, there's no way to approach the green. So for me, the main thing is to find the fairway again and it's really down there. Okay, what you're not allowed to do is to get away, you know, just to <laughs> make so many practice swings that the ball is going to be fine. So you really have to take care of that. But playing wise, what do I do? I put the ball a little bit further back in my stance and I try to develop a, a steep angle of attack. I have a wedge here, I get a sandwich actually. And all I want to do, I just want to hack onto that ball and try to get it back on the fairway. All right, job is done. Not a pretty shot, but it's out. So here we go, we're on another short part three and we have the win in our face again. And um, what I can watch a lot when I play or when I watch my students play, it doesn't matter what kind of win it is, they always tee it up quite high with an iron, which is in general not the right idea. The tee for an iron is just there to have a good lie. So, so more if you have the win in your face quite strong, you don't want to have it teed up high because the ball will fly higher, right? So all you got to do, you just actually put it down and you have a good lie and this is it. So my idea for that shot is to keep it a little lower. I don't want to hit it high. You know, so I want to have a low finish on that so the ball uh, doesn't take the wind as much. And I did. I kept it low. My finish was low. The ball didn't catch the wind and it played exactly the distance I counted it on. So when it comes down to distance control in putting, I can watch a lot of people struggling with that. And most of the three putts, they're actually coming up because the first putt is just so far away. It's either three meters over the hole or three meters short of the hole. It's barely the line which is wrong it's mostly the distance control so if you watch tour players doing their practice putt for a long putt they mostly look towards the hole and this is what i do too it's pretty much showing your brain and your and your feeling where you actually want to go okay if you want to take one practice putt after another it's also okay but me from for myself i'm just giving myself a feeling this is what i need to go to that hole now so I got my line and all I do I line up the putter I take my stance and I keep looking at that hole and then I take a picture and then I try to putt to that picture I mean of course that's luck as you know as a golfer but finally, it had a really good speed. It might have ended maybe two feet after the hole. But this is how I try to get myself into that distance control. Try it out. I ensure you it helps. Yeah.